I have to address a question which people have been asking me off and on since 2015. Mark, why have you been able to do some of the cool stuff that others with broader platforms and bigger numbers have not? The answer is simple. I doxed myself on day one. Doxed meaning that I put my personal information online so that people could reach out and find me if they wanted to. Why? Because when I made the Flat Earth Clues in 2015, I still had a lot of questions, and I was hoping that the internet hive mind could help me, which they did, mostly because they had an easy way to message me directly. To drive this point home, I'm going to do it at this conference. What follows is just some of what is in the description box of every YouTube video I have ever made. My name is Mark K. Sargent. My email is msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Phone number 303-494-6631. Actually works. Try it. Address 2125 Myers Lane. That is not a typo. That is how it is spelled. Langley, Washington, not Virginia. That's wa, not va. 98260. My date of birth, 11 a.m., April 24th, 1968, Seattle, Washington. Not some underground hospital in New Mexico. My generation is X. But why stop there? I think for something as fun as an international flat earth conference, we should take it up a notch. My zodiac sign is Taurus. I am looking for a double Gemini with a bad moon rising. That's not true. I have no idea what I'm looking for. Turn-ons include good kissers and critical thinkers. Turn-offs include bad kissers and anyone who thinks Elon Musk is a critical thinker. Seriously, guys, Elon is not your friend. Do not try to convince me that he should be my friend. I mean, look at this shot. He's been a fraud for the last 25 years. Room number? You wish. Yeah, so we're streaming this, and you know what trolls would do if they got that little nugget of info. The hotel would be called every 10 minutes. Can you ring room 323? I'd have to unplug it from the... Oh, wait. You thought that I just screwed up there, didn't you? Come on, guys. I'm a little better than that. Apologies if someone here has room 323. Can you go too far when it comes to doxing? I'm sure going to try. My vaccination status, from my cold, dead hands. See what I did there? I combined my stance on gun control with my stance on vaccines. Blood type, unknown. Even now, I don't know if I am A, B, A, B, O, or the negative versions. I'd like to know, but for the last three years, I've been a bit gun-shy about going into a hospital and finding out. I identify as a critical thinker. My favorite position is yes. My safe word, do not resuscitate. For those who don't know what that term means, it's a word that tells someone to stop tickling you. That is somewhat accurate when you think about it. If someone next to you chuckled when I said safe word, you might want to move down a seat. And if you were one of the people chuckling, come see me later about my room number. Little hint, it's not 323. Do not resuscitate is also accurate. I mean, come on, if you had to pick a time and a place, wouldn't death by tickling be your choice? Whatever, don't judge me. As you can see, I am also wearing what I call the code of credibility. By wearing it, I am automatically more intelligent than you. That's not true, of course. Some of you might be able to run circles around me. But at a subconscious level, it is having an effect. You've heard the saying over the decades. Women love a man in uniform. Every girl's crazy about a sharp-dressed man. Shout out to ZZ Top. Clothes make the man. You know that one. We react to the uniform. Policemen, firefighters, construction workers, and yes, scientists. Wear a lab coat and get in front of a camera. You would be amazed at what you can get away with. Bill Nye made an entire career by just wearing a coat and a bow tie. Now that everyone knows way too much about me, let's talk about another big question I get every year. That being, what do you see the eventual future of Flat Earth becoming? 
We'll address that in a minute. But first, we need to get the obligatory media sound bites out of the way. This next image and paragraph is for our enemies, our critics, and our detractors. It has been sensationalized just for them because, as we all know, mainstream media loves drama. They have always tried to villainize us, and I am happy to accommodate. It goes something like this. The Flat Earth Army is alive and well. Now that your mandates have been lifted, we are again on the move. We are coming for your friends. We are coming for your family. We are coming for your co-workers. Once we get them, we will then come for you. It's only a matter of time. We are everywhere. You can join us and thrive or wither in ignorance as the world changes around you. Make the decision or don't. It doesn't matter. The result will eventually be the same. You will become one of us. Long live Flat Earth. And that's the end of the dramatic soundbite. Anyone in media can email me directly for the text version. The real truth behind that statement is that we already did all those dramatic things years ago. We have essentially won the social media war. The other side just hasn't realized it yet. The proof is already out there for everyone to see. It's just that the opposition refuses to look at it. Consider this. We've been creating Flat Earth online content for the last eight years, and yet our biggest YouTube channels are all in the low six figures for subscriber count. The highest is ODD TV with 336,000. David Weiss and I both didn't crack 100K until this year. Jaronism is creeping along at 160K. The total number of subs from our larger content creators, including Eric DeBay, is a little over a million. And yet, not only do we do a national conference every year, we were putting on conferences during the pandemic when almost no one else was. Shout out to Karen B for making that happen. How is any of this possible with slow-moving channels? Because behind the scenes, we are still the biggest secret guilty pleasure of the internet. Do a search in YouTube. Type Flat Earth and sort by view count. What you are looking at are the first-generation click chasers jumping on the metrics following the trends. Shane Dawson, 40 million hits with 19 million subs. Vsauce, 35 million hits with 20 million subs. Mr. Beast, 28 million hits with 190 million subs. The overall numbers are staggering. Over a billion Flat Earth views from the verified YouTube channels alone. That's just one platform. The masses have been enjoying our content for years, but for the most part have been afraid to subscribe to our channels because who you sub to is sometimes viewable by the public. 90% of our members are still in the closet. They come from all walks of life and they're all around you. An invisible army that infects everything with critical thinking and truth. A virus that opens minds. And today is the only real pandemic. At one point in 2018, we were so popular in the search engines, we were outpacing all but the highest mainstream topics. During the summer of that year, we hit 20.9 million search results in YouTube when President Donald Trump was sitting at 20.8. And then weeks later, YouTube did the unthinkable. They removed the search results calculator from the main page for all topics, forever. In a sense, they killed the scoreboard in an effort to slow us down. They also reduced Flat Earth recommendations by 70%. Some might see that as delusional. YouTube wouldn't remove a ranking system because of Flat Earth. Really? This year, a show listener told me that so many people are currently searching for Flat Earth now affects non-related topics as well. The listener was watching a cheesy UFO movie. You know the type where the aliens say, take me to your leader. He became curious. Who is the leader of Earth? So he Googled and clicked on images. Feel free to do this with me. What do we find? Putin, Doctor Who, and, uh-oh, what's this? Mark Sargent, the leader of Earth? Sadly, no, but you can see how it happened. People search for Flat Earth so many times that any search involving the word Earth has been infected by our curiosity. This also means that you can't give me a hard time when the spaceships show up and start asking about me. Why am I so optimistic about Flat Earth? Because I've seen what has been built so far and where it's going. I've seen the future. 
The content created by people in and outside of this room became the rock-solid foundation for the first-generation click chasers who, in turn, have influenced the next generation to do what I never thought was possible. The masses of Gen Z and Gen Alpha kids that follow them have been influenced so heavily that for the first time, future careers have become part of the group think, an extension of the hive mind. From an article earlier this year, you can see the media endgame trend. For decades and decades, the future aspirations of younger Americans were varied and professional. They dreamt of being doctors, lawyers, and unfortunately, astronauts. They aspired to be professional athletes, singers, and actors. In 1985, Dire Straits had a hit single with the chorus was simple. Money for nothing, chicks for free. The first generation click chasers used the power of illusion and made social media creation seem easy, fun, and very lucrative. In doing so, they have influenced their audience to in turn also become influencers. One out of every three kids in America have now decided this is they want what they want to do when they grow up. To become an influencer, to be a click chaser, to create content. There are a few problems with this logic. The first is that there are far too many of them and not enough viewers to go around. Or as the saying goes, when everyone is famous, there is no audience. The second is that they are too young to create original content. Some are starting channels during their early parts of high school with little or no life experience, which means they will have to do what so many have done before, the never-ending reaction videos. And that is where we come in. Flat Earth is controversial but family-friendly. It generates hits and blows up the comment sections. And almost all of it isn't copyrighted. To any reaction channel, it is virtually irresistible. Where we see truth, they see gold. Every platform that is out there now contains flat earth, and positive reinforcement is the rule of the day. You get a spike in hits on a particular topic, you will be doing more of that topic. Most of our more annoying troll channels are based on this premise. They discovered that making fun of Flat Earth generated more hits and eventually some dedicated their channels to the theme. While the average person thinks that troll channels are a bad thing, I go the other way. Years ago, a producer told me, it doesn't matter whether you love or hate a topic, as long as you are talking about it. I'll conclude with this summary of the future. The Flat Earth Foundation in social media is too deep and too broad. It can't be removed now without taking down the internet entirely. Without the internet, they have no control. In short, we have them right where we want them. And to the trolls, I will give you the same statement that I gave back in 2015. Bringing people to your channel to make fun of Flat Earth is like shooting wooden arrows into a bonfire. From a distance, it looks like you are doing something. At the end of the day, you are just adding wood to our fire because you are, in turn, exposing more and more people to our truth. And even though I'm telling you you're just helping our metrics, you will still shoot those arrows because we compel you to. This is our war, and you never stood a chance. Long live Flat Earth.